What's up? This episode is brought to you by Nature Box. Nature Box is a dope subscription service that sends you great tasting snacks right to your door. Nature Box is great for the home, office, or any player on the go. I just started using Nature Box, and they done sent me the best pretzels, granola, and cookies I've had in a long time. For 50% off of your first box, go to naturebox.com slash iced tea. What you waiting for? That's N-A-T-U-R-E-B-O-X dot com slash I-C-E-T. I handle it a certain way. Anybody who really ever been in it can't speak on it like it's nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Welcome to the Ice T Final Level Podcast, featuring your co-host, Mick Benzo, and your host, Ice T. Hey, so what's happening, Final Level people? It's going down. We back. This is the second Ice T Mick Benzo Final Level Podcast. Believe it or not. And the crazy thing is, after the first one, Mick, we got really good reviews, right? No, we got some great tweets about it, man. We had one guy reach out. Twits? Said, tweets. Tweets, <laughs> man. Tweets, man. They tweeting, man. They tweeting. They tweeting, baby. They, they tweeting. Tweet. People they tweetin', know what I'm baby. saying. I'm saying on the on the charts. Yeah, like, no, but on oh, the charts, we're like number one, baby. How, how did that happen, Mickey? Hey, look, man, word of mouth, man. This Ice motherfucking T doing what he doing. He does it well, along with McBenzel from Sirius XM. Or either the rest lose. of the podcast are really, really lose. bad. This is not a not a good sign. We got to number one that easy. That's, that's crazy, but it's just like you say. I mean, people must be digging this. And the thing of it is, is that I just want to say I really appreciate the support. I didn't expect it, but I appreciate it. It's good to know. People is digging because honestly, this is about as raw as you gonna get iced tea. Just me just talking shit in my house. You know, Smooth the Hustler came in the building earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. For those y'all don't know who Smooth the Hustler is, just Google him. He's one of the most legendary rappers from Brownsville, Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Made the 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 classic hip hop track broken language. Yeah. Him and his brother, him and his brother. Trigger the gambler. These these are a couple of my friends. Now in hip hop, the thing of it is is that you might meet people, but only certain people actually will become your friends. Smooth and Trigger have become friends, family, you know, and just like on a normal Saturday, which we are recording this, Smooth showed up just to chill out. And, uh, you know, we're going to kick it off with this topic, right? The first topic we're going to get into is I need a new word for when you want to call a man a bitch, right? Because when, when when right now, when we out in the streets, you know, yeah, you bitch-ass motherfucker, you know, bitch. But what happens is you offend women. They're kind of like a collateral damage to that because they think you're talking about them. But really, you have no intention whatsoever toward a woman. You're, you're trying to disrespect this man, so you call him a bitch. You know what? I call Look, him a boy lover. Even, huh? Bleach. Bleach? Bleach. He's a boy lover. He bleach. What's a Bleach. I mean bleach. Nah, we got we need a we need, out of we need a good word bleach. <laughs> it takes the color. Out then, and then, then sometimes we even uh, you'll hear people say, "Are oh, you gay?" Nah, that and, ain't and, and and the thing of it is, is we're not tempting to disrespect anybody gay. Mm-hmm. You're just trying to say to this dude, "You suck dick." He's right? a boy lover. So you're trying to get him where it hurts. But boy lover, is, a, a it's best not word the fucking boy lover. Gay people, then that's disrespecting gay people. We never said mm. nothing about gay. I see he's a boy lover. Is that a problem? Yeah, that, that doesn't work either, Mickey. I, I, you I, can't right, well, look, go you know that what? route. Maybe See, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find something that would get under a man's skin that that make, you know, they, these guys need a name. I mean, they yeah, they, yeah. they are really, it's like you can't even get your, they're just punk ass, punk, pussy ass. Fucking Martian. Mar- <laughs> that's a good one. Is some I, aliens. I don't know. I don't know. They just. Right. Right, 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 right. So that's something I wanted to do because you know we write. I always call you bitch, and then I'm like, yeah, but I'm not trying to diss women, and you bag it. I'm not really trying to diss gay people. Right. I want right, It's right. something I want to. This is something I wanted to throw out there. Okay. On another note, uh, uh, podcast news over here, at final level. Uh, everybody's been getting at me because this uh per- impersonator, this guy named Rockwell, who can actually do my voice pretty well, called up. Paul F. Tompkins and had Paul F. Tompkins thinking he was talking to me. But apparently Paul F. Tompkins does an impersonation of me. So there you got two fake ice teas talking to each other. (laughs) And I heard it got really crazy. I haven't really got a chance to listen to it. I got it right here, Ice. I got the joint. You got it? I got it right here. Play it. Right now. Hello? 
Yeah, hi. I'd like to speak to Paul Tompkin, please. <laughs> this is this is Lee. Hi, this is Ice T. How you doing? <laughs> Ice T, I'm very well. How are you? Before we actually get this conversation started and stuff, I wanted to know from one professional to a comic, you know, where you were going with the Ice T stuff. Could you do a little like sample and stuff so I could hear what you sound like? This is this is the moment that I dreaded. I I, I understand that, but I really want to hear this. I I want to hear this from you because I I really right. want to, you know absolutely. Um, <clears throat> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, in my universe, uh, you are uh, a guy who's very into uh, uh, specifically science fiction, and then. Some fantasy, like you make it very clear that it's like not a lot of stuff. There's a little bit of overlap. Um, so, like, you, if you were pitching a movie, uh, it would be okay. So it's like this guy's a vampire, but then he's also part cyborg. So he's got like 99% vampire, and then he's got one robot foot. So he's, that makes him able to walk around in the daylight. Right, right. Yeah, I see where you're going with that part, but I want to hear the iced tea from you. No, I just did it. <laughs> that was I swear to God, that was it. Oh, my God, that was terrible. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't mean to bust. Every time you say so, I want to tell you, no, sh you shut up. I know what you're <laughs> That was terrible. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> I really thought you was trying to speak like me, my voice itself, and there, I was—I just couldn't understand this. Now I will grant you, to to me, uh, you know, the, what my impressions are not like the super technical carbon copy impressions. I no, the know. funny thing is, is like I will feel like I'm capturing something, and then when I listen to you actually talk, I realize, oh yeah, it's not. I, like I would never be able to fool somebody. I would never be able to call somebody up and say, "This is Ice Cube," and have them believe it. Oh, all right. Oh. You know, I'm under no illusions that that I'm I am you know able to impersonate you with with laser accuracy. Yeah, right. And you know, so I I, I like comedy and stuff. So I didn't know where you were going with this. I thought you were trying to imitate my voice. And I couldn't. Well, I well, I was trying to, uh, but I oh, certainly right. cannot argue with as you as it is your voice. I cannot argue with your review. No, but just ease, please ease back with the iceberg stuff. <laughs> I could not believe. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't make any promises, but I will. Yeah. But I will say we'll always be respectful. I've seen you around. You have a nice resume. You do have a nice. It's not bad. I've I've gotten to do some some fun stuff for sure. Yeah. So you was in the you you were a good friend of mine, Matt Damon, and the informant. <laughs> That's right. We sat across from each other at a table for an afternoon I, I for that movie. They, they covered your face with a fishbowl. <laughs> with a fishbowl. With a fishbowl or something. They covered you up. I, I didn't see you in there. But anyway, you, know, you, you must have blinked. You must have blinked. I, you know, I, I like, you see, my type of comedy is roasting and stuff. Because I didn't want to hurt your feelings, you know, but you do look a little bit like Borat. At first I, thought you, I said, Borat's trying to impersonate me? Like, I felt, I felt really special. You know. Ice-T, you are special. All right, you know, it was a pleasure chopping it up with you. I wanted to, you know, I actually want to chop it up with you again sometime. But um, let me ask you about the podcasting stuff. How do you, you know, from one from one podcaster to another, any tips you want to share about that? How's, how's that working out for you? Oh, I love it. Podcasting has been so great for my career and, and has, has allowed me to, to reach so many people. And, and as you said on your first episode yesterday, you know, you only get uh, 140 characters on Twitter. And there's, there's you know, the, the idea that you can express yourself with these things, you can say whatever you want to do, you're your own boss, and it, you can do whatever you want with the medium is fantastic. I, I, I think the only advice... The only tip I could give anyone is if if you have a strong sense of who you are, be yourself and do what you do. And, you know, I really enjoyed that first episode yesterday with uh, with you and Mick. It was uh, really hilarious. It was wildly entertaining. Thank you. I appreciate absolutely. that. Yeah. I'm... Oh, absolutely. Listen, there's only, let me say this, there's only one iced tea forever and ever. Thank you. I appreciate that. And that goes for you as well. You know, you're definitely doing your thing. And, um, you know, if you want to blow me up a little more, it's not a problem. <laughs> Thank you. I see. I appreciate that. No problem. It was a pleasure talking to you. I'll be speaking to you again, all right? 
Oh, uh, just thrill. Anytime. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Peace. Okay. That was comedy, and I'm cool with that. You know, they say that, you know, when people impersonate you. Mockery is the best form of flattery. And I look at that as flattery. So all I got to say to all the iced tea impersonators out there is really thank you, but don't get me in no motherfucking trouble, all right? Don't be calling up none of my ex bitches. Don't be doing nothing. Don't be going over nobody, calling on the phone, getting loans and shit. Don't be threatening motherfuckers with my voice and then I get shot. Don't do my voice and get me in no motherfucking trouble change my voice as long as it's all good and it's fun and it's happiness and all that you know what i'm saying it's all good but don't get me in no shit motherfucker don't be impersonating me and get me in no motherfucking shit and then you got to hear my real motherfucking voice standing over you pounding you the fuck out you understand because we're all friends right so basically that's basically my my theory on people acting like me. Uh, I would love to meet Paul Tompkins because I heard he's a cool dude. Rockwell, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't mind meeting y'all motherfuckers so you could really, you know, get up and close and personal with the real ice tea. But that's just somebody out there. It's just all fun, Mick. How you feel about now, it? You may be able to put you know the what? To work, you know what, actually. though? Just remember this. Don't get him in no goddamn trouble you know? you'll hear the real voice standing <laughs> over you <laughs> pounding you out. <laughs> Squarespace is our sponsor for today. They're the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. I use Squarespace to make my website, and you should too. Just take a look at the IcedTFinalLevel.com site, and it only took two hours to make, and it looks dope. Start with a free trial at Squarespace.com with no credit card required. When you're ready to purchase a plan, get 10% off with the offer code ICE. That's S-Q-U-A-R-E-S-P-A-C-E dot com, offer code ICE. Okay, pal, this next segment is movie. Smooth, what's the last movie you saw? Uh, no, nah, actually, I saw The Undisputed, actually, uh, Mike Tyson. Oh, 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 that was, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 Woo, yeah, I saw yeah, that about yeah. nine times Yeah, now. yeah, I had to watch Decent. it twice. I had to I watch it. I loved it. Watch I loved it. Real yeah. talk, real talk, and I'm not ever going to lie on this show, uh, Coco and I watched it last night on HBO. Oh, shit, see? I made her I watch it because Mickey I, made me watch it. I told it. him wow, so yeah. dope. He said he don't feel like watching it. He watched yeah. it and got hooked on it. Yeah, My yeah. last movie I saw was... I whoa, think whoa, whoa, was- pause. Let's talk about The Undisputed. <laughs> if, if, if you guys are out there and you get a chance to get it, it's called The Undisputed uh, Truth with Mike Tyson. Just, it's, just a, it's worth it yeah. just to watch the Mitch Green fight segment. Oh, that's yeah. the funny. funniest, uh, one of the funniest things big up I've Spike ever Lee. seen. Big, big up, up Spike, Spike Lee, Lee. Uh-huh, uh-huh, another Brooklyn uh-huh. guy. Yeah, right? It was yeah, crazy. Another Brooklyn, Brooklyn big guy. Big up to did. Mike Tyson. I met Mike Tyson back in the day before he even met Robin Givens. He's always been a close friend of mine. Love him to death. This is a real funny piece of work. God bless you, Mike Tyson. Go check it out. What are you gonna say, Mickey? What's your show? Ride along. I thought I was watching Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy with Ice Cube oh, yeah? and Kevin Hart. No, no, no bullshit. It's mm. the funniest thing out right now. Nick. Ain't a day somebody doesn't call me Cube. Every day I'm walking down the street, somebody go, Ice Cube, Ice Cube. Right, I'm like, I'm Ice T. I ain't never write a rhyme. I say, every day on the street, somebody calls me Cube. I tell them that's my homeboy, but it's Ice T, dude. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Luckily, yeah, we're yeah. friends. Right, right. Cube's right. right. good people, real good yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. I saw American Hustle. Oh, shit. Mm, how was that? Don't. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Maybe I read the book on that shit. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. We here with the book again, huh? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Christian Bale. He's, uh, he's nominated for an Oscar on this shit. This movie's dope. It's once again another crime movie. Somehow, some reason I always like crime movies, but it just. Oh, I mean, crime is interesting to watch. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at this age, it's, it's interesting just, to watch go down and on see TV. how it unfolds. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like a puzzle. Yeah, but actually being involved in nah, it, that's, it, that's, it's that's, it's a young man's sport. You know, yeah. everybody at these tables done our dirt, mm-hmm. and uh, it's kind of like it's a young man's sport. You know, once you figure out that there's really no way you can retire in it. You know, Rado, you know, the, only, the only thing I want to say inside the movie segment, Iceberg, is I'm really tired of seeing seriously black actors just playing slaves and butlers. That shit is getting annoying. When you got a black friend, don't ask him if we've seen the slave movie. We seen it. I seen Toby. Please. I seen Roots. I yeah, seen yeah. all that bullshit. <laughs> seen it. Done it. Know it. Read it. Learned it. Why, why, why keep rekindling the shit? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that was and, movie. And, and the thing of it is. 
Y'all didn't do shit to us. All the white people that are alive, y'all ain't did shit. No. You just look like the motherfuckers. You understand? <laughs> yeah. Just look yeah. like the motherfuckers. That's so now right. you got you trying to figure this shit out, and then you just decide, let's make another slave movie. Just oh, get niggas shit. mad again. I can't yeah, watch yeah. none of that. Please. No, I want to see this that shit. I understand what went down. Yeah. That was movies. Whoa. This is news with Ice T. Yeah, did you hear about the cop that shot the dude in the movie theater because he was texting? No, hold on, hold on, hold on. I yeah. thought texting and driving was dangerous. <laughs> right, right. That's what I thought. That, those are the ads I see, right? Retired texting cop, and driving. If you didn't hear the story, the retired cop, 71, who shot this dude, and now he's trying to use the stand the ground law because he said the dude threw some popcorn at him. And, they, and they, had, they had a lady who he had approached prior who they was interviewing, and she was hysterical. She was like, oh, you know, he looked at me a few times. Oh, so he, he was just straight up crazy. He was just straight text-hating. <laughs> <laughs> he was text-hating. Now, the cold, <laughs> thing is, the, the cold thing is, you go in the theaters, you go to Batman, they letting off. They letting off rounds. Now, yeah. you go to the movie theater, which is supposed to be state, you get, you get dumped on in that motherfucker. It's yeah. like... Now we're it's starting to some... make bootlegging make sense. You know what I'm we're, saying? It's like, no, no, no. We stay got... home and just get the bootlegging. Yeah, yeah. At least you're watching it at home. And don't think I'm contoning bootlegging. I'm just saying it's violent up in the movie theaters. Now, what do you think about this dude? 71-year-old cop killing a, somebody. A retired officer. Oh, you got it in front of you? Yes, yeah, a retired officer. Out in Florida, as you said, in the theater. I think Texan in the movie theater is real dangerous. That's all I can say. <laughs> it's really? dangerous in there. I don't, even think, I the mo- I don't I... even think the movie had started. Yeah, he was texting between the previews. Wow. And when you're texting, you're not talking. Right, right. So how yeah. could that disturb him? Really? Right, right. Put the coat what over you say, your head What you say? They got him now, right? Shit, they should. He's a he's a retired cop. They oh, know but he in Florida. They got him locked up in Florida. Though, but right? that locked up That's in Florida is like getting out. It's crazy. Exactly. In Florida, exactly. you know, I you, mean, you so he you, you, he you can just cable. see a kid walking through the yard in Florida and stuff. So he's got on a hoodie, just dome him. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Say That's he jumped new, you. You know, this is how end. they get down down yeah, there. Yeah, that's the new. Such a beautiful I place too. I well, I got I, I got some other news, man. You know, today is the 21st of January, and it's our second podcast. 2014, January 20th, was yesterday. It will mark Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s federal holiday. This is a milestone. It's perfect opportunity for Americans to honor Dr. Martin Luther King's legacy. That makes a day of service, empowers individuals, strengthens communities, bridge barriers, creates solutions to social Mickey, problems. what the fuck are you trying on, to say? Bro, I got to say, it's Martin Luther but King. Don't it, try it, to read the no, print no, no, right no. now. I'm on not, not, ra- not, not going to uh, read the print. I'm just saying it bridges barriers and it creates solutions for social problems and moves us closer to a Dr. Martin Luther King vision. This is very important. That's great news. That was beautiful, that was, Mickey. But basically, you wrote that down? 46 years ago, Mickey wrote all kinds of notes. Yeah, See, I this do. is what I happens. Do. This is what I happens. Do. You get the podcast, the first one. Now you've gone home. You done wrote some stuff down that you want to try to say <laughs> and sound intelligent. Nigga, just say it's Martin Luther King Day. Yeah. And God bless. I, I mean, oh, me first man. 46 years this man was assassinated, man. And that's, you know, come on. Martin Luther King, rest in peace, man. It's this whole week, yeah. though. It's whole I've been, week Martin Luther I've King been pushing the Martin Luther King thing mm-hmm. ever since I, I knew about Dr. Martin Luther King. And, you know, his dream was that black people and white people would be walking side by side. And, you know, a lot of people in this world, there's a lot of racism goes on, but I just, I've never been part of that. You know, I'm too light to be have problems with white people. You know, I've had, like, one of my rhymes, I said, you know, uh, I, I don't hate white people. It's a well-known fact. All my homies got killed by blacks, mm. you know? So I think that, I think the sooner we all realize we're one race, the human race, Yeah you know, the world will be a better place. The problem is that we run under this team mentality that my street's better than your street, my school's better than your school, my religion is better than your, my state, my country. So under this team mentality, a.k.a. gang mentality, Mm because basically it's a gang, Mm -hmm. you know, Harvard versus Yale, we gangsters, you know, we're better. It's very difficult for people to bond because we set these bears, you feel mm-hmm, me, smooth? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Of course, of course. It gets it gets difficult. So God bless Dr. Martin Luther King, and I think you know all of us. It's our job to try to fulfill his dream, you know. And uh, yeah, yeah. On, on a serious note, 
That was beautiful, Mickey. What As you, you say in the to final do. level podcast, you're gonna hear some. <laughs> nah, in the final level Mickey podcast, <laughs> hold up. In the final <laughs> level church. podcast, you're church. gonna hear some seriousness. You're gonna hear some funness, but you're gonna hear some realness about what and you're we gonna do. hear words that you've never heard before, like yeah. funness, <laughs> funness and shit. You know, <laughs> copper tunnel that y'all can look up. You know, come on, yeah. man. You know. well, that's beautiful, yeah. Mick. That was nah, really that was beautiful. Cool. No, that's real talk, man. You know what I'm saying? Martin Luther King Day. Is there anything else happening that Ice T wants to give to our podcast listeners? I mean, you know, I'm always doing something. I'm always busy. You know, I think the, I think the main thing uh, we got going on right now, we got our clothing line coming out. Uh, the website's going to go up in a minute. You know, what Powered line? by Hate. That's something else. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's called it's basically called Powered by Hate. Let hate become your motivation. You know, right before you go to the gym, just go, you know, find somebody talking shit about you. you listen to them. Let's sink in and go get those extra reps in. You know, mm -hmm. use pay hate as a motivation. So that's coming real soon. I mean, the biggest thing that's happened in my household is Coco's fitness app reached number one on the iTunes list. Coco mm. got an app? Yeah, she has an app. She has a fitness app. That, you know, all these girls are coming to Coco and they're like, hey, Coco, we want to work out with you. You know what I'm saying? They got over the fact that her ass is real. You know oh, what I'm shit. saying? They, 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 oh, my God. It was like crazy. Girls were like, oh, she had fake butt. She had fake butt. I said, Coco, just look at that as a look at that as a compliment. You know, it's a you know, you told them you got a boob job. I mean, what? what People <laughs> think white girls can't have asses. Mm. Just haven't seen enough white girls. That's really <laughs> all it is. Because white girls is packing some ass out here nowadays. Asses, you know yeah. what I'm saying? They got ass and everything. <laughs> you know, so they getting really pissed at her. And, you know, she went on the doctors and they, they x-rayed the shit, sonographed the shit. Son you know, but I told people a long time ago, I'm like, yo, the girl is a normal woman. She eats, you know, get some mashed potatoes and some, 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 some fucking, uh, you know, <laughs> macaroni and That's cheese up in food. that motherfucker. Yeah. And if you know how to hit it correctly, uh -huh. you could build an ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <There> <laughs> and, <it is. laughs> and people are like, oh, well, you know, she got, she got... Um, what they say, implants. implants. I'm like, I would have blew them motherfuckers out. <laughs> You'd have bust them down. I'd have blown like, them shits like out. A the tie. It'd have been like, like a pot, like a mm -hmm. pothole. Yeah, you know, so now girls are going out doing all kind of shit, putting fix a flat in their ass. <laughs> <laughs> Do they think that means fix a flat ass? I mean, real talk. So, I mean, you know, I, I hate to say it, but okay. you know, it, people just tripped. So I told her take it as a compliment. Coco got a real ass. I mean, really, what's the problem? I mean, she had ass before girls were going out getting all this shit done to their butts and she works out. The girl goes in the gym. The girl is like squatting like 300. So this you know, app that she has. It shows all that. It shows her secrets. Uh uh it's, you know, she wanted to do a videotape but then it turned into a DVD, and by the time we got around to doing it, it became an app. And now you just go on your iPhone, you click it. Where they can know, find the app at? The app is in, um, you know, in, in iTunes. iTunes. Yeah. iTunes Coco. Right now, it's not, it's not, it's not, um, for, uh, Android yet, because you know it's two different mm. operating systems. iPhones. iPhones. You click on it. It's like three dollars. Oh, People okay. like, how much it costs? Three dollars. Three. If, bucks. if you ain't got three dollars, you shouldn't even get out of the bed. Really, you, you know what I'm saying? If you ain't got three dollars, mm. you shouldn't be able to piss for a whole day. Mm -hmm. If you ain't got three dollars, motherfuckers mm. should come over your house, and smack the dog shit out of you. Mm. Everybody should have three dollars. Just three dollars. Yeah. If you mm. ain't in Somalia, someplace <laughs> fucked up, you should have three dollars. Especially okay. since y'all so concerned about Coco. Why don't y'all check out Coco's app? Oh, I app. can't buy the app. The app is $3. Well, then you got a bigger problem than working out, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you, <did. laughs> you know? So if you got $3 uh, and you want to get your shit in shape, support the app. And Coco basically is, you get to work out with her. And her app is number one, Mick. Number one. Hard work. Dedication. The girl works brings hard. Success. The girl that works hard. Success. The girl got me in the gym. People look at me. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to turn 56. I'm, I'm in, getting close to the best shape ever. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really in the best shape because, mm -hmm. you know, when I was doing gymnastics, oh, shit, I was go. in better. But I'm still looking kind of nice and right. I could still put, put mm. one on you. Talk yeah. crazy and mm. I'm going to come across your jaw. And mm. it's nice. It's nice. I'm hitting the bag. I'm in there training and stuff like that. But really, you know, when you got a girl. Come on, Mike Tyson, slow down. When you got a girl that's a swimsuit model, 
Mm -hmm. You don't want to be the fat man at the beach sitting next to me. Oh, you, right. you want to be able to put on a bathing suit, too, not just walk around in your clothes. Not fat necessarily ass speedos, stomach. but you want to show <laughs> something. Oh, fat ass mm -hmm. stomach hanging no. out. Hey, no. look. I'm not a six-pack nigga. I'm not, I've am not. never been a six-pack. I've always been about having some motors. You know, where mm -hmm. I grew up, you had to have big you arms. You got to have arms, yeah. six-pack. That shit, I didn't yeah. give a fuck That's about it. You ain't washing nigga. no clothes what on your... What your arms working with? Yeah. <laughs> How you hard can you hit a nigga in the face? Can abs hit a nigga in the face? You ain't washing no damn clothes on your chest. Hitting you in the face. Uh, hey, look, man, we want y'all to remember, oh, this is shit. the Final Level Podcast, and especially all our men out there. Check out Mel Awareness Foundation, because we actually care about our men getting those annual physicals. Dang, now a public service announcement. This is uh, going out to Justin Bieber. And uh, right now it's time for Ice to say something to Justin Bieber. Uh, you know, he, uh, Justin is Usher's artist. Usher's a friend of mine. So in a way, I feel like I'm kind of like Justin's big uncle from the hood. I'm like, I feel like I'm an uncle to Justin because, you know, I, I feel the boy has talent, but I think he's making some mistakes. Justin, we want you to pump your brakes right now. Just take a second, slow down a little bit. This is from Hood Cats, you know. <laughs> we want you to pause a little bit because you do not want to catch a felony in the United States. If you catch a felony in the United States, they're going to deport you, and that's going to cost you a lot of paper. And one of our rules in the streets is keep the drama at a minimum and the cash flow at a maximum. OK, so don't get caught in none of this want to be down, want to be gangster bullshit. And as far as your friends up in your crib, you know, what I'm saying you got to regulate them niggas because basically they ain't got as much on the line as you do. You're the one that's going to lose. This is going to be big to you. And this is what I'm saying to you as an OG and as your big uncle Ice. Just pump your brakes, man. Just slow it up. Keep making your music videos. Keep getting your money. Keep the little girls, you know, excited about you. And that's it. Nobody wants you to be tough. Nobody wants you to be out there acting crazy and having the cops raid your house. Motherfucker, when the cops raided your house, I ain't never had that many cops at my fucking front door, man. Come on, son. That, that was crazy. It was like you was Rick Ross or somebody. You know, mm. Freeway Rick, they was up at your door. Mm. You can't do that, man. You know, your boy, he he don't care. You know, my man that's laying on my couch over here, he ain't got I'm on SVU. I got a career. I'm over here. He got guns. He got coke. Oh, God, he get got him out of here. Get he him don't out. care. Yo, yo, pause. You can't come up in the crib with all that player. Mm -mm. Come on, man. Mm -mm. You know, and anybody that's doing that is not respecting your right. get down. Right. Yeah. Right. It's okay? your career. Justin, gate. it's okay. your career career and that was Not your there. gangster uncle ice <laughs> and that was a public service announcement just so you know ice tea and the final level podcasts are all about health coco just put out a new fitness app called coco's workout world which is available on itunes mick benza and i've been working on the male awareness foundation to get men to start going to the doctors and you guys know I work out on the regular just so one of y'all young fools don't try to come along and take my job on Law & Order, you know what I'm saying? Also, I might have to smack one of y'all at any moment. But health isn't just about fitness, it's also about what you put in your body. Now, I like junk food more than the next man, but it's hard to even call something food when it's more likely made in some lab like at Breaking Bad than a farm. So, what's the alternative? Most of these health snacks that Coco keep trying to slip me are expensive and they taste like shit. Then I heard about Nature Box. Nature Box is incredibly affordable. Now don't trip off the word affordable because even people with money, they like to say they money. That's why they have money. It's made with wholesome ingredients. It's 100% nutritionist approved and the snacks taste great. I dare you to try and find some pretzels and granola cookies that taste as good as this stuff. I could pick through a variety of eight different types of boxes or let them surprise you with their discovery box. The Nature Box is also available in three different sizes. A Deluxe Super Snacker, five bags for $19.95. A Happy Snacker, 10 bags for $29.95. And a Smart Snacker, 20 bags for $49.95. The monthly box always ships free to the U.S. mainland and each bag has big man servants to ensure you won't be left hungry. For 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash iced tea. That is N-A-T-U-R-E-B-O-X dot com slash I-C-E-T. Thanks again to Nature Box for keeping our stomachs full and this podcast free.
what's happening, Mickey? What's what's going on in the music scene? I mean, everybody everybody's out there doing their music, making their noise and stuff like that. I, I, I stopped listening to regular radio because it just drives me crazy. I want you to give the audience from the Final Level Podcast perspective this new Body Count album. Just for the record, you know, the, the Manslaughter album, Nobody's Safe. Nobody's safe. I'm going in on everybody that I feel to have a problem with. The stuff we talk about on the podcast is basically in the record. I mean, we're on, Sumer on the Sumerian record label, same label as Lamb of God. Uh, we went out and we took a few of the records on the road to the Fun Fun Fest down in Texas, mm -hmm. and they destroyed. Loved it. And uh, I just feel like making music right now. I don't feel like making hip-hop because I think hip-hop just went totally pop. You know, I'm not singing to no girls. So I just, I'm not crying. So we're going to do the metal album. But this is a different kind of rock album. It's like this album, I don't even know what category you could put it in. I, it's just hard. It's just hard. And I'm really proud of it. And uh, Mick, I went to the funeral back in L.A. And oh, Big man. Rich sat in the back car, right. back seat of the car. Mm -hmm. He said, man, Ice, this might be your best work. Wow, the Body Count album? Yeah. Mm. Well, you on it screaming yeah, and yelling. Come on, come on. You know, <laughs> what I'm saying our, our listeners, we want, we want to give y'all something out of our Fine Level podcast. The Body Count album will be slated to come out sometime in, I'll say March, April, May, or June. No, no, no. April, May, that's what we're April, talking about. April, May, April, May. And then we're going to be doing a lot of festivals. We ain't going to be doing no bunch of clubs. So don't Shouts call me, to the don't band, Don't call too. for no Sorry. clubs, man. Yeah. You know, Shout Ernie C. Ernie C. Yeah, the production is incredible. Ooh. I mean, you already know what, what Ice going to put to it, but... The band is incredible, man. So yeah, we got a new drummer, man. Ill Will. Band we got a new incredible. guitar player, Juan of the Dead. You know, Vincent Price Vincent is on Price. bass. Woo. You know, uh, Will Putney, he 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 uh, produced it. He's out here in Jersey. This kid is sick. As a producer, it's like you got another band member. This fool has this album sounding crazy. I want to give our podcast listeners something to, to think about. When you're out on tour, don't think it's all fruit and gravy because sometimes a riot can explode in your own show, out in, uh, I believe it was Italy. In Milan. Milan. Italy. Oh my God, it was a body count show too. Yeah, we was at a, it was definitely a body count show and, and we were in Milan, me and Mickey, and uh, out there the way they like punk rock is they spit on you. Yeah, they, they, they think it's some right, dead right. Kennedys. They think Circle Jerks are still on oh, tour. Shit. You know, so they, they decided they wanted to spit on me. Now, me, you know, I'm hardcore rock. I understand the game, you know what mm. I'm saying? I go, mm. I'm down, I'm all the way back from, you know, Black Flag and everything, but don't spit on me. Mm -hmm. People are carrying all kinds of new kind of contagious diseases. I'm like, mm -hmm. come on, man. I want you to spit. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. spit might get in my mouth or something, man. Come on, man. <laughs> so yeah. I asked the people not to spit. They decide they want to keep spitting. So right between the end of the show and an encore segment, right before we did Cop, Cop Killer, uh, we go off the stage. I look and I look at Ernie C. His whole guitar is covered in spit. Oh, man. Saliva. Wow. With saliva. Look at him. He want to make a saliva spit. <laughs> Nasty. He, he, yo, he played the picture with so that So I tell him, I tell him, I say, who spit? And he said, this dude right here in the front row. So I said, point him out to me. You know? So mm. I, then I go outside. I see the dude. I say, uh, okay, everybody put their hands in the air. Sucker punch move. I got them all with their hands over their head. I got to come out in the front row. <laughs> Bam! Him. I just dump on this fool. <laughs> Boom! He got his hands over his head. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! I hit him. And then they try to grab me back into the audience. Some of his boys try to grab me. Okay. And then out of my peripheral, I see a mic stand, and then I blacked out. Oh, what happened, Mickey? Unbelievable. What happened? But I don't that's know. A story, that's a story. For, we don't want to give it all up. We just give y'all some stories about traveling on the road. Yeah, they set the whole know? they set the whole place on fire. They knocked out. They knocked Whoa. all the windows out of tour bus, flattened out the tires. They set fires at the end of it. It was a place called they the Rolling beat Stone. They the tour bus driver's, driver's ass. ass. Oh, they start wow. singing soccer cheers. <laughs> they was trying oh, to shit. kill us. And, and they call the police. They call the police. You know what the police said? <laughs> we ain't coming. With the, with the body count, the cop killer, we don't come. We don't come. Ah, this story we don't is, come. Oh, no, this is real. We don't come. <laughs> the story's in my book. And uh, basically, we got out with our life. But the, the best line was I asked my roadie after we sat in the arena for two hours trying to let it subside. Oh I asked uh, Bendrix, I said, uh, how many people are out there? He said, about 300. I say, are they mad? He said, they ain't waiting on autographs. <laughs> <laughs> so we got out with our life, but that's that's oh, that's shit. that was the road, and uh, that was just one of many stories. Wow. 
Plug, cuz. <laughs> Smooth got something. Hey, um, I'm 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 just dropping a free download, free release, a, a EP album called Full Time Hustle on the 29th. You be able to get it from my Twitter account. And that was music, our music segment uh for the podcast. And uh that was just one of many stories. Okay, right now we're in the philosophy section. Uh, everybody is always like my daily game and, you know, the stuff I try to give out on Twitter at Final Level. Um, all philosophy is is really your theory and belief on how things work. Uh, you know, uh, to be a philosopher, you just have to eliminate anything you've been indoctrinated with. It could be religion. You just, Anything you believe but you don't know why you believe it. You just believe it and just deal with things that have happened in your life and basically come up with your theory. That's how Buddha, Buddha was a Hindu. He went off in the mountain for some amount of days and thought deep thought and came back with his own mm -hmm. theory and he came back mm -hmm. and he's the Buddha, you know? So my life has been so crazy that I came out with, a lot of theories and I like to exchange them with it. And one of the, with the people, and one of the things we talked about on, on uh, Twitter uh, was, I, I made the comment, there is no secret to success. Anybody who's ever touched success knows it's nothing but hard work. That's it. And grinding. Mm -hmm. There's no special, I mean, mm -hmm. come on, you, Mickey, you manage Big Pun. Yes, I did, there's okay, no manual. You, you manage Grandmaster mm -hmm. Flash. Fat Joe. Fat mm -hmm. Joe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the secret? There isn't. It's hard work and dedication. <laughs> There's no manual to right. success. It's hard work. Mm -hmm. Just like Ice-T does. Hard work. That makes success. There's no special... Somebody got back and they said, well, it's who you know. I'm like, you can know anybody, but if you don't bring the goods... Right. They don't want you around them right. anyway. You become uh, what you call a burden. Yeah, you... you there Tom is Tom burglar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There isn't. So I think the mistake people use, and I don't know if this is a philosophy or just some game, but they think somebody's getting it easy. Now, if you happen to be an heiress or your parents have the money and they hand it over to you, okay, that was easy. But they worked. Right. Or maybe their parents worked. Maybe it might have been handed down through generation. But somebody busted their ass or... They go, they 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 go, date all the way back to slavery, mm -hmm. and then we back yeah, to that. We back to that conversation. Back to that one. <laughs> somebody else busted. Somebody their else busted. Ass. Ass. <laughs> but nowadays, yeah. you're gonna have to get out there and work, and there's mm -hmm. really no other way around it. I mean, unless maybe you're a woman and you just marry some guy that's got mm -hmm. the money, or you're a guy and you marry an old. Whoa, woman whoa, whoa! You talking about basketball wives? Oh, just see, there you people. go. Mm -hmm. Just start marrying men. <laughs> there, there you, know. you go. I mean, it's normal now. I mean, you know. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, there's a lot of ways, but you're going to have, hey, I put it like this. Even if you're a woman and you're going to marry a rich man, you're going to work. You're going to work. There's yeah. going to be some work going oh, yeah. on. You're yeah. going to have to have something going on good. Yeah. You know, I used to look at rich women that, that were married to wealthy guys, and I was like, I know her pussy's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, 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 <laughs> there's yeah, got yeah. to be something yeah, yeah. That's, that, 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 lock, that closed yeah, that, that deal. That locks him in. Mm -hmm. Something is going on. She ain't sitting around not just, doing nothing. Yeah. Shit. Not with a guy that's got a lot of money, got a lot of opportunity. And mm -hmm. if you a young guy and you think you're going to knock one of these older women and you know, you going to they going to put you to work. You gonna, yeah, you going to work. Yeah, you're young gonna work. gun, you going to work hard. My boy Rich, uh, oh shoot, I shouldn't say his name. <laughs> one of my buddies, he he spent a lot of time, you know, jiggaloing, mm -hmm. you know, with women. And I used to say, "Well, what do you, I said, well, and he I guess pimping. It's pimping." I'm like, "Well, Rich, is this really you're sleeping with older women for money. Is this really pimping or hoeing? Pro, <laughs> he says, well, uh, I just call it renting out the beef sack. <laughs> <laughs> That's a philosophy. I mean, there, hey, ain't it? hey, 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 get paid for it. But at the end of the day, there is no secret to success. Right. You're going to work mm -hmm. one way or another. Somehow or another. And, exactly. and and the people I've seen the most successful are, are workaholics. Like, you could be out on your man's yacht, and he mm -hmm. got the big yacht, and everybody's eating, and, and you out there chilling, you know, hanging mm -hmm. out. You know where he is? Go downstairs. He's on his phone mm -hmm. trying to get some more money to pay for this yacht. Mm -hmm. These people, they don't ever stop working. So the theory 
you just gonna retire some kind of way and money's gonna come from out of space? No. Right. No. Right. I, I've yet to see that. I've yet to see that. And if it does happen, it's very, very rare. So get up, get up early in the morning, get your grind on, and uh you'll have what you want. Hopefully, if you if you putting if you putting it in, yeah, yeah. You're gonna get results. Now, you know, you is right out of the streets like me. Mm. What's the dilemma? When you now you're trying to make legit money, you know how to go get some money. Whether it's hustling, selling drugs, what you, what you were doing prior to that, mm -hmm. what was it, what was happening mentally at when you were in that transition period? Wow. Um, at, at 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 one point, you know, you get opportunities and stuff like that. But at the same time, the evilness is now hidden. Whereas, you know, on on the streets, you know, you you know, everything is opposition. Every you know, everybody, the everybody's cops, yeah, the everything's hustlers. opposition. You know, getting into the music game, you know, you kind of kind of let your guard down to an extent because then you got people. You think um, they're more honest? Exactly. At the end of the day, you find out that they j ex more crooked than the <laughs> niggas on the street. Wow. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So uh, that transition was crazy for me, and I got a crazy story. Boom! I first my record just hit the radio station. What was my, the name of the record? What was the name? It was of the hustling. Okay. My everyday lifestyle ain't nothing, nothing but a hustle. hustle. Yeah, so you know, I know I, everybody knew me from the broken language, but it was that hustling record that stayed dead to me because mm -hmm. radio uh, labels ain't know what to do. Mm -hmm. It was no market, whatever. But here go the wild transition story. I get a I get a show in Brooklyn at the Arc. Like everybody who know about the Arc, it's it's in the wild area. Mm -hmm. All of the wild boys is there. <laughs> so, you know, prior to that, you know, we was hustling. We was sticking up drug dealers. We was doing all that kind of shit. So, boom. So now they're announcing it on the radio. Yeah, smoother hustler, uh, you know, at the arc, blah, 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 blah. So I'm not paying this shit. No mind. Mm -hmm. Until I get there, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> now look, you know we got shooters with me. This we just we fresh out of the street, but now we want to taste the rap shit. So we we go through the side, but as when I come on stage, I seen so many crews that we done either dealt with enemy. on the street, enemy right. exactly. They was posted. I was like, damn, I might die tonight. I'm right. like, all right, you know what? Let me suck this shit up. I'm like, yo. Hold up, yo, shouts to all y'all, you know, all the real niggas in here, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I know what it is. We respect it. We ain't even on it like that. Boom, I start rocking, end of the show. It was love. From that mm. point, you know, I guess I got that You know, pass. I remember I had to go back to L.A. after uh, people got rocked and they thought I did it. Right. I you know, know on how. the streets. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm like, you know. Yeah. And, and you know, when people think you did something, that's heavy. It's just as yeah, bad exactly. as if you did it. Exactly. You know, it's like even worse. You, you did it. Even worse, because now you got this this type of wall, like, damn, I I don't want to go out. Dude, you know, let right. me tell you, when I first started getting <laughs> wow. into the show business, man, I was just, my biggest transition was just actually taking pictures. Mm. Because I came from a crew and we never took pictures, and you know, I, there's like three years or four years of my life unphotographed. Like right. the, you, you, mm, had, mm. you know, like when you mm -hmm. see the gangster stories and they got an old picture, like there's yeah, only one it. picture. Yeah. That's what real hus That's what the real hustlers were. They're hard right. to photograph. You can't right. see them. Well, you saw that, mm. and you mm. saw that with uh, Denzel when he played. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, what was the name? The, American. The, yeah, American Frank Lucas. Gangster, Frank, Frank Lucas. Lucas. Remember, yeah, Frank yeah. wasn't into that. Yeah, wasn't in yeah. that flashy. Wasn't in. Nah, nah, nah. That Minky Mink. It caused mm. a problem. It started, and, people started looking at it. Mm -hmm. like, Damn. Fame, fame mm -hmm. and that life don't Remember? go hand in yeah. hand. You yeah. have to make... Fame and that life do not go yeah. hand in hand. You have to make a choice. That's why I'm happy. I'm on the other side of the fence. I'm square mm. as a pool table, twice as green. Mm. Wouldn't steal a nickel off the mantelpiece. But mm. I keep that thing on me just in case. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, 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 hey. But um, well, you, you know, know what? You know what's smooth? I mean, even though this is a philosophy, you just dropped some good game. And one of the things I tell cats is that one of the key things that street cats have is anonymity. You know, they got nicknames. It's Pookie or whoop de whoop hit you, you know. But once you become famous, you can't hide anymore. Anybody mm -hmm. want to see Ice-T, they just go to the Law & Order set. They can mm -hmm. come get me. Right. I'm there. Mm -hmm. You don't disappear. And once you become famous, that, anonym that anonymity is gone. Mm -hmm. You want a flyer. It's mm -hmm. easy. You easy right. to be reached. So you do something in Florida, 
But now you in New York, they just get on a plane, come mm-hmm. right up, know where you at. The show. They'll be at sound check. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you got to leave that behind. You know, I say in one of my records, you trade infamy for fame, and they're two totally different things. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think at the end of the day, uh, our, our, our um, philosophy for the day is this is not going to be an easy road for anybody. The success you want, you're going to have to work for. And anything that's worth it, it's going to have to take a struggle or you'll never respect it. You tend not to care about things that people hand you and give you. But when you bust your ass for it, it means something to you. Mm-hmm. And that's philosophy. Final Fight. Level Podcast. Right now we're in the gaming section, you know, and, and this is very interesting because uh, after the first podcast, we made it to be the number one. Am I right, Mick? Yeah, number one on a gaming podcast. Yeah. They say that they say the game is to be sold, not told. You know, I should be taking the collection, <laughs> but on a final level podcast, I'm making exceptions. Okay, <laughs> so sometimes me and Coco play games. I do the driving games. I do uh. Like a need for speed. I like that because the cops chase you in it. Here we go again, me and that bitch. <laughs> for some reason. But anyway, you running, you running from the cops, and the, you got to do these moves to make the cops crash. Mm-hmm. But then you're doing these races. So what she'll do in the corner, there's a little map. But if you take your eyes off the screen to see the map, you'll wreck. Mm-hmm. So she's like, left, 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 right, right, hard right, hard so you right. Have a, you turbo, have a, turbo, a, turbo, mm-hmm. turbo. You have a, a navigation when you up there. Yeah, co-pilot. Co-pilot. Coco. When you do when you do when you do uh, uh rallies, you have somebody in the front seat with you, you know, yeah, reading, yeah. you know, I bull run, I race across the country, so you have that. So she's my like co pilot. And then also I'm not somebody that's such a purist gamer that I'm afraid to go to YouTube to cheat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, when I'm I get okay. stuck, sometimes you'll get stuck in these games mm-hmm. and you'll be ready to quit. Mm-hmm. And and it used to you get the you used to get the books. And you look through them now. You ain't got to do that. All you got to do is put the name, the t- whatever your problem is in YouTube, and somebody somebody <laughs> know about it, and they'll show you how to beat it. But you now don't do that just because they show you. No, I'll do it. Oh. I, hey, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Not. Just because they show you how to do it doesn't mean you can do it. <laughs> like, all right, you're going to get on this ledge. You put one foot on the ledge, then jump into the air, especially, and then land on one foot. Then you'd be like, man, listen, how did you do that? But I've actually had games, I can't think offhand, that were so difficult that I stopped playing them. Mm. Did you ever go back to them, though? No? Nah, man. Once you no? put a game up, usually it's a wrap. Wow. So, wow. so I mean, I'd rather... If you want to call it cheat or get a little assistance or a little guidance, I'm not a game purist like that. Well, now we're back into the nerd world, okay. you know, where they get really pissed off if you do anything other than this. Then they want you to go back through the entire game and get all. They got these things called Easter eggs, and then mm. they got this thing called a hundred percent completion, where you like on Grand Theft Auto, you complete every task and every thing wow. on the entire game. That's crazy. Mm. Who gives a Fuck yeah. about that. <laughs> Who do you tell you did yeah, that? Yeah. My, one of my boys on SMG, Sex, Money, and Guns clan, my man, once again, uh, one of the best players I know, name is Coleman, he did Call of Duty to where he got to the highest level of prestige. Prestige is when you get to the highest level, qu- quit, mm. lose all your guns, and start over again just to get another little emblem, mm. a little badge, <laughs> right? Wow. So... He did it. He got to the highest level in Call of Duty. And then he told people he did it. They're like, you have no life. You have no woman. They dissed him. Yeah, you got a lot of time. A lot of time you have on no his job. Hand. I mean, it, it turned out to be a diss because he played it so much. Right. He had a lot of time on his hand. He probably, yeah. is he successful? Because he nah, spent nah, a lot I of time on that game. He told me, I'm on the dole, man. He's from, a, <laughs> he's yeah, from, from, he's from Liverpool. Yeah, I said, what's yeah, the dole? Yeah. It's kind of like welfare. <laughs> <laughs> That's Coleman on, on SMG. Wow. He'll, he'll, he's the captain of my. He's the captain of, of my clan. Sex, money, and guns, mm-hmm. and we call it sex, money, and guns because that's kind of like what makes the world go round. If you really take a little bit of time and think about it, okay, uh, yeah. So that that you know, in games. So this is another segment that I have in here in games called "I'm Not a Hater." 
but I hate shit. Okay, uh, being a hater is more jealousy or envy of somebody. But everybody hates shit. This is something I hate on online gaming: racism. You know, you're on there and you're playing, and all of a sudden this nigga, 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 this nigga, 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 this. Oh, you spick ass motherfucker! They call Mexicans, they dissing people. What? It's oh, it's what? rampant. It's and the gamers crazy. that are listening to this know that these cats go in, they go over. Oh, are there any niggers on my team? And I remember I was playing. Um, what was I playing? I was playing um, Rainbow Six, and I I, I could I, I could figure out which character was the racist. And I just spent my whole game. I, I wasn't no longer playing a game. It was just about fucking this dude up. Like, I, I, I'd fucking spawn camp this motherfucker. Wow. And he was going crazy. But what, 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 is, what is with that? You wouldn't say that. These same people never say this stuff mm -hmm. to people right. in their face. Right. They're in this virtual world mm -hmm. where they can just go into this unnecessary. And there's kids on there. Mm. There's kids online gaming and stuff. And I've heard people go in on kids, like, say, real unnecessary shit to children and stuff. To me, that ain't fly. Man, don't you wish there was a button where you could just push on some of this internet shit and it would just give you an address? <laughs> or be on a I Dream a Genie and pop in their goddamn house. Just pop house. up on their motherfucking they ass. Uh -huh. pop we need, up we need mm -hmm. I Dream a Genie. We'll, and we wouldn't even need ski mask mitts because mm. they wouldn't be, they there would nobody, there would be no... There would be no, right. there, there, there would be right. nobody to talk about it. That's right. it. You just know like Dream Gene, pop him in. Oh my God, he's in my house. They say, Oh my God, what what just happened? So you and know, that's game. We ain't got no masks on because there's not gonna be no witnesses. So they need they to make talking. the blackout button, <laughs> pop up button. The you pop just up pop up button. on people. Even the people that are on the blogs talking crazy, like you just hit a button and just Google, just pop up on them or something, because these people go crazy. But anyway, back to gaming. You know, I'm a, I'm a first-person shooter guy. I'm not claiming to be the best in the world. Uh, we're going to start on a further podcast. We'll review games on here, give you my opinion. And, uh, and, and, and people that are Internet racist, Eat a motherfucking hot bowl of fucking dicks. You care. I mean, this shit is so motherfucking corny. Really, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Fuck them. That was Gaming with Ice T. Okay, now when somebody like me checks out an artist or a company, the first thing we look at is their website. If the website looks like crap, I assume this sloppiness seeps through every form of what they do. Remember, your website is the first impression anybody has of you, so you better start off right. As McBenzo says, I don't deal with no monkey business. That's why I use Squarespace. You're not a coder? No problem. Squarespace's drag and drop tools are so easy that anybody can figure it out. Not a designer? No problem. Squarespace has tons of built-in layouts for you to choose from, so your website can look dope even if you've never designed anything in your life. You can even build an online store with Squarespace to sell your merch. Using their platform, you can sell physical as well as digital goods and pay the lowest credit card processing fees out there. Squarespace's plans start only at $8 a month and come with a free domain name when you sign up for a year. $8 a month. Now listen, if you wouldn't go to a job interview dressed in a garbage bag, then don't send out a web link that sends out the same message. Get a free trial with no credit card required just by going to squarespace.com. When you're blown away and ready to confirm a plan, use the offer code ICE to get 10% off. You'll be getting a great deal and you'll be supporting this podcast, keeping it free. Okay, that's the business. That's S Q U A R E. S P A C E dot com offer code I C E. Thanks again to our dope sponsors. Please support them since they're supporting us. In the criminal justice system, sexually based offenses are considered especially heinous. In New York City, the dedicated detectives who investigate these vicious felonies are members of an elite squad known as the Special Victims Unit. These are their stories. Boom, boom. Okay, right now this segment is called SVU Behind the Scenes. And after the last one, I gave, I gave away a few things. I talked to you about Dan Florek leaving. Was I lying? Didn't, no, he didn't. wasn't. Was no. I lying? Now, I got no, to I, I, I give you all behind the scenes stuff without spoiling anything. 
you know. But uh, everybody on my show has listened to the podcast, and the funny thing is they're all telling me what to say. You know, one <laughs> of the producers, Jonathan, he wants me to tell you how wonderful his uh, sweaters are. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, the show is now going into this other realm. Now, people are asked, they, a lot of people don't even understand how episodic drama television is shot. So let me give you that beso- behind the scenes level. Law and Order, our show takes eight days to shoot. And a one hour show is something like 48 minutes because you have the yeah, commercial. commercial. Yeah. Okay, so it takes, mm. it takes that much time to shoot it. Uh, it takes 14 hour days. So you're shooting, uh, Eight days, add two days for the weekends. You're shooting three shows a month. Um, right now, there's three shows that you haven't seen that are done. Mm-hmm. That's how far we are ahead mm-hmm. in production. Uh, th- during this time, this is when they go through, they do ADR, which is overdubbing. This is when they do the music. This is when they do any extra additional shots. This is a big production. As an actor, we have very little control over what happens on the show we show up we read the lines this is what this particular character does sometimes we can go to the producers and say hey you know i was thinking this about my character they say stop thinking Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> they're the writers. They're the writers. They're the writers. They're the writers. Yeah, yeah. And when you're an actor, you're pretty much a puppet. You know, you mm. show up. My buddy Maurice is in here right now. We're doing a, a production called Taking East New York. And uh, he's a writer. And they write the stuff. And the, the actors can't just show up and decide to change what he wrote. It might change the way the story goes. Mm. Production really respects people that respect the craft. And that is... Do what they say do the way they see it. But you do ad lib sometimes. You don't have to word really. for word. No, 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 no. We're on script. This is NBC. All this right. ain't the WB, homie. Okay. I'm like one of the only black people on NBC. Mm-hmm. You ain't coming up in there, oh, skiddly be bop a doo bop a shoot. <laughs> 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 nigga, you yeah. say what they wrote yeah. or you get, you learn, nigga. Yeah. And this final level podcast, just behind the scenes of this SVU, is it. right? But I'm, I'm going to say something. Did SVU. Speak After on it. 15 years, get 11 million viewers. You, you, it's impossible. You, now, we got 11 million the other episode, mm. the one with Mariska uh, um, in court. People were really connected. And, you know, we're very, I mean, hey, I think what keeps SVU going is because it's connected to something that's real. It's mm. serious. You're dealing with rape. You're dealing with child molestation. When you watch other other shows, they're dealing with somebody, rich person that got shot. Nobody really cares. Mm-hmm. But a lot of these shows we do really strikes a chord with people's lives. And so our fans are very hardcore. A lot of them are real survivors, mm-hmm. women that have gone through heavy stuff. So we have to respect them and give them a show that's true to their experience. And it's a hard show to write. Um, I'm just lucky to be on it. I mean, as far as behind the scenes, any any anything that you may not know that's coming, I mean, really behind the scenes, the big buzz is like I said on the last podcast, who's going to come in? Mariska has basically moved to the sergeant. I'm the head detective. There's only three detectives. Is it going to be a chief or is it going to be a detective? I do not know. And trust me, nigga, I got my ear to the fucking ground over there. I'm asking everything. I'm asking the makeup people. Y'all heard anything? Anybody heard anything? But nah, we don't know. And uh, you know, and lastly, last last week I talked about Chris. People going off on me on Twitter about my castmates. Listen. Every one of them have their own Twitter account. Dan Florek has a Twitter mm. account. Richard Belzer has one. Kelly Giddish, you know, uh, uh, Dan Pino and Chris Maloney. People getting mad at me. Don't get mad at me on Twitter about somebody else. I, I, I have a bad, I have a hard enough time controlling myself. Yeah, yeah, As yeah. to go over to another grown ass person and tell them what to do with their life. There's nothing I could do about that, you know. So let's let's just keep it, keep it, keep it civil. You know, don't make me call you a dummy or nothing, because I do that on uh, Twitter. I get mad sometimes. I just say, you dumbass, didn't you hear what I was saying? Now, if you're really following Chris, Chris has his own new show coming on Fox, you know? Uh, Chris's new show is called Surviving Jack, and that's going to be dope, because that's my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, 
basically that's the behind of the scenes. That was a little basic production behind the scenes. That's behind the scenes. Final level podcast. Ice T can only tell it best because I damn sure don't know nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. Now it's time to take some callers. This is Ice T live. Talk to me, baby. Ice T, this is Charlotte from Saratoga. How you doing, man? All right, man. Thanks for being on the second podcast. How how's life up there? Oh, not you was- bad, not bad. Cold, cold, cold. It's upstate. It's upstate, but it gets all horse country up here. You know how it goes, upstate. That's what's up. What you want to talk about? Well, you know, listen, I it, uh, something may be a little off, but uh, you know, your SVU, I gotta like the way the show is developed. I really think that you can feature yourself as an actor at this point. I don't think you get enough credit that way. I don't. I think you were like kind of like over overshadowed by like Bowser and you know the boys. But uh, I, I really think that you got a chance right now. Come into your own and show it. Thank you very much for the call. Absolutely, buddy. Give Coco a, a kiss on the cheek and a smack on the ass. Take That's care, what I'm gonna do. You know I'm gonna do that. All right, take care. Hey, what's up? It's Ice T on the Final Level Podcast. What's cracking? What up? What up? It's Mark. Mark who? My name is Mark G from Detroit. Producer. I make beats. I go by Scooby Pack. Check out my Twitter. It's just at Scooby Pack. I got that. I got that. I got love for Detroit. Hold up. Hold up. Give out that Twitter again, baby. Promote yeah, yeah. yourself. At Scooby Pack. S C O O B Y P A T K. Been making beats for a couple years now. No place in but Well, you making beats? Hey, so listen, 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 Scooby Pack. You up in the final level uh, uh, podcast right now. So you got myself. You got Smooth the Hustler. You got Mick Benzo in the building. We've been making this hip hop for a minute. Are your beats dope? My beats are dope. <laughs> you sound really serious about this, Scoop. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm in the studio right now. I turned my, my bedroom into a studio. I got turn on a beat right now. Can you turn on a beat? Check it out. Check it out. The intro right here. I think that must be intro. I don't hear no beat. Sound kind of lovish to me. Hey, yeah, you know yeah, who you talking to? Gangster rappers. <laughs> All right, who's gonna who's gonna get that beat? Drake. <laughs> yeah, right. Usher. Okay, like Scooby, Usher. Scooby, Scooby, Scooby. We do gangster rap, okay? So we like hardcore beats that sound like somebody's losing blood. I got some of that too. You want to play that? <laughs> no, I'm just playing with you. We just playing with you, Scoop. Yeah, That's yeah. a good beat. Send that one to Drake. I got a bit of everything, bro. Hey, but look, we got to go to the next one. You got your, you got your plug in. We got to hear your music. And we going to keep it moving, man. Thanks for being part of the podcast, Scoop. We love you, baby. All right? You out? For sure, man. Take it all, easy. All, all right. Church. Okay, we got one more caller on the line. Hey, yo, this is Ice T. You're talking on the Final Level Podcast. Who am I talking to? It's Jamie from Hate Breed. Oh my goodness, we got a we got a we got a, a celebrity caller. My homie from Hate Breed, Jamie. What's up, baby? Uh, not too much. I'm I'm getting ready to go into my daughter's dance show, but I saw your tweet and I figured I'd call in and congratulate you on the podcast. I listened to the first episode and I figured I'd call in, say hello, and ask you how come it's so hard to get like a soundtrack to a film or get a song onto a film. There's no more judgment nights or anything like that. I wanted to know what you thought of, you know, the current state of why soundtracks are just whack now. I really don't know. That's that's that that I mean, you know, saying it is I haven't had any new music in a while, so you know, you know we're doing a new body count album. I might need you to come over here and get on it. You know? Yes, I, I would love that. That would be an honor. For those of y'all don't know, I was listening to the Colors soundtrack on vinyl yes. the other yes. day, and you know that's one of the hard, that's one of the best soundtracks, and it just made me think like, how come even though the downloading's really bad and everything, you would think that it would be we could get a body count song in the credits of a film or a hate breed song. This it's like everybody's fighting for the same crumbs, and I thought I, this is a good question to ask. Nice. You know what? I'm going to investigate that. You know, I'm one of those kind of cats, Jamie, when when I don't know, I'll say I don't know. 
And um, the last time we got anything placed was, you know, we did the song for Gears of War. We got it in a video game. Uh, we did that BC song for Gears of War. But it, I guess it's going to have to be one of the producers that, that in the film particularly wants a group. It's, it's very... It's very interesting, but that's a very, very good question. Can I say something about Jamie? People don't know. Jamie Jasser, lead singer of Hate Breed, and uh, he came over to this room. We're in doing the podcast, brought a recording studio <laughs> in an anvil case, and me and him did Ice Pick lyrics for his band Ice Pick. Pick. We did, we did a, uh, uh, um, what is it? Uh, uh, the song was um, uh, uh, Real uh, Recognizes uh, Real. Real Recognizes Real. Real, real, and we real recognize real, and we're talking crazy, and I'm talking about shooting and killing, and we're right here in the living room. He, he, he's amazing, and this is my man right here. You dig what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I'm, I'm gonna investigate this, Jamie, and I'm gonna call you back, and we gonna get on a soundtrack. God damn it! <laughs> I don't think <laughs> none, none of this pussy ass shit movies they making, but there's definitely something like Saw. Or, 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 or something uh, uh, cool. that did some some shit that needs some hate breed and needs some body count shit. I got a record called Pray for Death that's perched. Huh? That was the last huh? one we were on. We were we were on the Saw 6, and that was like, you know, that was going back maybe like 2009 was Saw 6. And then since then, it's been dry. You know, we had Freddy vs. Jason. We had we were in Triple X. We were in the film Triple X with Vin Diesel. You know, sometimes you get these little breaks where the actor or the producer, the director goes, oh, yeah, I'm down with metal or I'm down with hardcore. But it's it's been really hard as of late. And I, uh, you know, when I heard the new body count was coming out, I was like, man, this might be a good time to try to do another Judgment Night or try to do a cool project that brings people together and you know i might have to make a movie you know after i did the art of rap i might have to make my horror movie that i got in my brain and then just just get all my friends all my metal friends on there to to go in there and just make some real you know devastating violent shit that people need to hear you know the people that like decimation and, and brutality that we do you got to do it. You got to do it. And you know what's great? I tell the story to people all the time is when I was at your place and I, I wanted you to do one other track. You said, yeah, let me, let me, I'll lay down some bars. I think you laid down about 16 bars, which I still have the Pro Tools session from. Mm-hmm. And just mm-hmm. off of the, I think it was a freestyle. You just like off the top of your head, it was like enter the gas chamber or something. <laughs> and you just went off. And it's, it's the hardest like 16 bars, so eventually I, I need to put that on a song with your permission. Do it, do it. Do it. I don't sue my friends. <laughs> I don't sue my friends. I'm like, who, whose song is that? Who so- oh, that's Jamie. Oh, okay, it's cool. I don't do that, baby. Hey, hey, but look, I'm going to get at you, though, because you got to hear this new BC album. It's brutal. It's brutal. It's called Manslaughter, and I kill everybody. Nobody's safe. That's the code line. Nobody. I heard Sumerian Records. I heard Ash. Ash told me he said Sumerian Records next summer, whatever. Believe me, I'm I'm down. I'll if you want me to get brutal on a track, that would be it would be my pleasure. I would be an honor to to share the mic with you again, man. Okay, that's the business. Everybody, give a round of applause to Jamie from Hate Breed. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Yeah. All right, we gotta go. Be gotta good, go. man. Thanks for letting me talk to you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks for calling in. Now, how about that, Mickey? We get celebrity. We got celebrity callers calling in. Hey, this is the final level podcast. That was they, first, that was our first mm, celebrity mm. call, and wow. we didn't give him. We he didn't. There was no special number. No, right? just right. like everyone else. Okay, so that was the second final level podcast. What do you yeah. think, Smooth? You just stumbled onto this. Stumbled on. I th- thought it was a great thing. I think me and Icy really got something here, man. This, <laughs> yeah. this, this, I think, this right I, here? I think I need. I think, yeah, I think so me, myself. You and Ice got something. I going. think we got. I think y'all should let me come up every once in a while. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Then you'll be taking my damn let job. Let me get a little spot. <laughs> let, me tell, let me tell you a story. It's funny. I had a friend named Smash, and one time I was staying over at my buddy Shiny Mac's house, and uh, he showed up at seven o'clock, and mm-hmm. Shiny Mac's mother made him some dinner. The next day, seven o'clock, he showed up again. Gonna... He showed up so, again. So smooth pops up next week. We know it's it. <laughs> it'll be <laughs> love. It'll be love. If anybody's trying to contact the podcast, you can hit us at Ice and Mick at gmail.com that's i-c-e-a-n-d-m-i-c-k at gmail.com that is the final level podcast email 
reach out and touch us. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We're here and we ain't going nowhere. And Mick you know Benzo. What? And Ice T. And you know what? Shouts okay. to everybody out right. there that supported the first podcast. This is only number two. There will be a number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, like the Crack Commandments. We're going to keep it fly. You know what I'm saying? And uh, in part, you know, Mick Benzo, Smooth Hustle, just happened to be my friend that showed up today. And Ice T signs out. You know what I'm saying? And uh, keep it fly. That's how, that's, how, that's, how, that's, how, that's how I'm living. That's, 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 that's how I'm living. That's how, that's how, that's how, that's how, that's how I'm living. That's, that's how I'm living. That's, that's how I'm living. That's, 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 that's how I'm living. That's, 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 that's how I'm living. That's, 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 that's how I'm living. That's, that's how I'm living. That's, that's how I'm living.